Today, we will learn how food scientists use the pH scale in their work. A substance's pH describes how acidic or basic it is. The pH scale ranges from 0 to 14, with lower numbers more acidic and higher numbers more basic. Acidic substances have a pH between 0 and 7. Those with pH above 4.6 but below 7 are classified more specifically as low acid, an important category in food science. A basic or alkaline substance has a pH between 7 and 14. Here are pH levels for some basic substances. You are probably familiar with the acid taste of some foods such as citrus, vinegar, or carbonated beverages. If you've ever swum in seawater or brushed your teeth with baking soda, keep in mind that those are bases. You will try the most basic form of testing, pH indicator paper. Indicator paper changes color depending on the pH of what you dip it in. Dip a strip of paper in each beaker and then take it out. pH indicator paper. Indicators used in pH testing are chemical compounds that change color under specific conditions, visually indicating the pH, acidity, or basicity of a solution. Scientists normally use digital pH meters for precise readings. Match the indicator strips. Food scientists care a lot about pH because a food's acidity level influences what we need to do to store it safely. Consider this jar of salsa from the Spicy Salsa Company. Canned and jarred goods are vulnerable to an organism called Clostridium botulinum, or CBOT for short. The bacterium CBOT is common in the environment and may be found in food. We cannot see it, taste it, or smell it. Therefore, we just assume it is there and make sure that conditions are not favorable for it to grow and produce toxins. CBOT is common in the environment and is usually harmless, but when CBOT grows under anaerobic conditions, it produces deadly toxins. Anaerobic means in the absence of oxygen, such as inside a sealed jar of food. When the neurotoxins produced by CBOT are ingested by humans, they can paralyze or kill. This is called botulism. To keep people safe from botulism, food scientists work to ensure that canned and jarred foods have the proper acidity. CBOT cannot grow at a pH below 4.6. In food science, substances with a pH below 4.6 are considered acid foods, while those above 4.6 are low acid. Low acid foods are vulnerable to CBOT when sealed in jars. Take a look at the ingredients in Spicy Salsa Company Salsa. When food scientists consider a product, they look at its recipe to know what food safety risks to watch out for. Products that fall in the low acid category are at risk for CBOT, the organism that causes botulism. CBOT grows and produces toxins when pH is too high, not acidic enough. Do you remember the pH level at which CBOT can no longer grow? Drag the marker to the pH level of acidity the salsa must reach in order to be safe from CBOT. Ingredients below that level are low acid. To know whether this salsa is at risk for CBOT growth, consider the pH of its individual ingredients. From our research, we know the approximate pH of these various ingredients. Match each ingredient to its place on the pH scale. Looks like most of our ingredients don't reach the safe level of acidity, pH 4.6. The tomatoes, the most acidic ingredient, are only just barely below pH 4.6. Clearly, once these ingredients are combined into salsa, the salsa will be at risk for CBOT. Traditionally, tomatoes were considered an acidic food that was safe from CBOT. More recently, horticulturalists have created new varieties of tomatoes, 
and they have a reduced acidity. Testing the pH of your product every time means you won't be taken by surprise when an ingredient has a different pH than you expect. To obtain accurate and precise measurements of the salsa's pH, in a later section, you will learn to take measurements in the lab with a digital pH meter and to use proper sampling techniques. First, we need to make sure the pH meter is reading accurately. Scientists calibrate equipment before using it in the lab to make sure its measurements are reliable. To calibrate means measuring something of a known value with your instrument. This way you know whether your instrument is measuring accurately or inaccurately. Here's your pH meter. The most common way to calibrate a pH meter is with a two-point calibration method. This means measuring the pH of two different standards with the meter you'll be using. pH meter. Each brand of meter is a bit different. Read your owner's manual to make sure you're calibrating correctly. To calibrate, we use standardized solutions called buffers. We'll use 4.01 and 7.0 since the foods we're dealing with are close to this range. pH buffers. You can get certified buffers from manufacturers or scientific suppliers. Transfer around 25 milliliters of each buffer into the beaker. Using a 50 milliliter beaker, fill the beaker with the buffer to the halfway mark or 25 milliliter mark. Fill the next beaker to approximately 25 milliliters. Rinse off the pH meter probe with tap water. Some meters need distilled or deionized water. Make sure the pH meter is in calibration or standardized mode. Calibrate the instrument at the same temperature at which it will be used. In this case, use room temperature since that is the temperature of our salsa. Put your pH meter in the pH 4 buffer and gently stir the solution with the meter. The top number will get very close to 4.01 and begin to stabilize. This is when you press the hold enter button. Now you are calibrated for solutions that tend to be solidly acidic, below 4.6. Rinse the pH meter probe with tap water. Then, leaving the meter in calibration mode, put your pH meter in the pH 7 buffer. After a short time, the value will stabilize around 7.0. Once again, press Hold Enter. Press the Hold Enter button. Now you have conducted a two-point calibration. This improves your accuracy when measuring food whose pH is close to the pH range of 4.01 to 7.00. After calibrating, change the pH meter to measure mode by pressing CAL, C-A-L. Now that you've calibrated your instrument, you can trust it to give an accurate reading when you test the pH of your product. Use proper sampling techniques to make sure your measurements of the product are meaningful. You will learn how to take samples correctly in the next section.